Before I start, I should probably say that this is my favourite film of all time, to the point that if I was sent into isolation, this is the one piece of media I had choose to maintain my sanity. Not that it doesn't have its flaws, which I will do my best to cover during the course of this review, but I thought I should warn you all that I may be a touch biased before you listen to me gush during the review. In addition, I should also mention that the film is based on a series of graphic novels that I've not read, so as a straight adaptation, I can't say how accurate it is, although the production of the film did occur at the same time the comics were still coming out, so I have heard there is a fairly substantial deviation towards the middle and end. Anyhow, with that out of the way, on with the review! The film follows Michael Serra as Scott Pilgrim, 22-year-old loser and bassist as he tries to win the affections of Ramona Flowers, the mysterious new pink-haired hipster girl in town. However, Scott's version of Toronto, for reasons never elaborated upon, seems to run on video game tropes, so this deceptively simple task is complicated by him having to fight each of Ramona's exes in turn to the death, while struggling with his own inadequacies and baggage. Truth is, with films with a comedic bent, it's difficult to review without spoiling some aspect of the film, as surprise and timing are two important aspects of good comedy. Part of the reason this film is my favourite, though, is that it is a good comedy, Dialogue is snappy, even bit characters that don't get all that much screen time get amusing lines, and that often helps to give each character character. Speaking of characters, the main players in the film, Scott and Ramona, have enough complexity to maintain interest in the runtime, and we're encouraged to like Pilgrim despite him acting like such a pillock, especially at the start of the film. I think it can get away with this though, not only because a number of his friends seem to acknowledge this fact, but because the purpose of the film seems to be to beat some sense into him literally. Pretty much everyone else in the film has about as much complexity to the main characters of your average rom-com, however most have their own lives and agendas that serve the story, but will plough on in spite of it without Scott's actions affecting them. The director of the film's Edgar Wright of the Cornetto trilogy fame, and his style shines through here. There is barely any wasted screen time, Every scene is filled with such youthful energy and totally fits the tone of the scene without becoming exhausting, and he's great at making large casts of characters interesting to follow. The video game and comic book influences also make the film visually interesting. The fact everyone is a martial arts expert without training, the constant colour and energy swords and stat values and meters, narrated annotations and fight scene onomatopoeia. It was these things that initially drew me to the film, and the fact that they seem to be the way Scott contextualises his world is what cemented this film in my heart, as it pretty accurately mirrors that of someone who would have grown up with video games and comic books. As I mentioned, Pilgrim is in a band, and with that being the case, you might also imagine the soundtrack would also bear mentioning, as it plays a substantial part. The music is very rock and grunge inspired, which totally appeals to my sensibilities, and fits the tone of the film absolutely perfectly. Having said all this, I can see the film is not perfect, and whilst I reiterate I've not read the comic, I can imagine more space there could be dedicated to fleshing out Scott's entourage beyond what we see in the film. Not to mention each of the evil exes who each only get a short paragraph from Ramona, if that, to explain their backstory and allude to what they may have against her. This could make each feel quite throwaway. Thankfully, each of the actors playing them doesn't phone in their performance, and they're pretty distinct and colourfully written. There is one exception to all this in the X's, but they do arguably get the most visually stunning battle, so I'm tempted to allow them a free pass on that. I'm sure a couple of things might be a deal break for some people. The general surreality of everything might break some people's immersion or suspension of disbelief, especially if they're uncomfortable with the relevant tropes. I'm sure some may also feel that the mere premise of a guy fighting other guys in order to win a girl is offensive. However, I feel the context of the film and the fact that the lady in question is shown to be capable in her own right, or at least more so than Scott, does substantially mitigate this particular complaint. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is a wonderful example of what a video game film can be. It uses the visual language of video game as well as story structure to enhance the film rather than cynically use a license haphazardly and hoping for a functional film. I've said it a couple of times that this is more of a love letter than a review at this point. If you're at all interested in video games of any kind and want a romantic comedy to watch, then this is definitely going to be your jam. Thanks for watching me ramble on and on. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in watching more video game films reviewed by me, click the subscribe button and be sure to leave a comment telling me how awesome or terrible or awesomely terrible my opinion or video is or just tell me what video game film you'd like me to review in the future.